eBay authenticated my graded card, but still rejected it via the eBay authentication program. Let's talk about why that happened. So here's the deal. I sell graded cards on my eBay. Sometimes I sell raw cards too, but typically I don't sell high value raw cards. I always get anything high value graded just so that I know that authentication process has already been done but eBay still runs graded cards from $350 or more through a authentication process. And overall, I think that this program is a net positive. It is inconvenient to buyers because it takes extra time in between buying the card and getting it because it has to go to the authenticator and get run through the authentication process. But I think as a seller overall, it's pretty awesome because it's just another layer of protection between you and the buyer for something that's so high valuable, especially with all the fakes and proxies and stuff that tend to trip people up. They've tripped me up in the past and I've lost out on hundreds of dollars because of it. So I think it's overall good, but we need to talk about something because this was just absolute nonsense. So recently I sold this card, the Shaman EX promo from the PokeCoon collection box and it was an awesome sale. I sold it for $637.50. These things are pretty hard to come by. They come in similar boxes to like the Mario Pikachus, the, those full art promos. You can get this card in English. I think it was much more available in English. So that's why this one was a bit more expensive. But I sold this card for over $600 and shipped it off normally. Everything was fine. I get an email about a week later and it says that eBay has rejected it through the authentication process. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's weird because it's CGC graded, it's a 10, and somehow it still got rejected from the authentication guarantee process. So I gave eBay a call and I was told that the card passed inspection. It was authentic, it was guaranteed authentic, but it was rejected based on the listing. So something in my listing was either wrong or I didn't provide enough information to them to authenticate not only the card, but apparently the card via the listing, which doesn't make any sense to me. You're there to guarantee the authenticity of the card and of the graded slab that the card is in and the relationship between the two. You're not there to guarantee the authenticity of what I say in the listing? That seems super weird to me. But we'll take a look at it and we'll see if anything I said in the listing was wrong or categorically incorrect. So the specific things that they told me was that my description was not good enough in terms of the condition of the card, which seems wild to me that I would even have to describe the condition of the card when it's graded a CGC pristine 10. Uh, and I was also told that I didn't have enough pictures in the listing and my pictures were not clear enough or did not describe the condition well enough. Again, it seems just completely nonsense that a card would get rejected based on how much information is actually in the listing. But let's go through it. So at the time that I listed this, this card in a pristine CGC 10 was a pop two. So some people might say, well, Java, it's not a pop two anymore. At the time that I listed it, I, I checked it. It was a pop two um, and I own two of the cards. So I had both of them. So I knew that there was only two. I am that that sleazy fucker for all you guys that puts that puts PSA in the listing title because I still think that people who are looking for this card in a PSA 10 who can't find it would probably enjoy seeing a CGC 10. So sue me. I don't think that would get it rejected. And that wasn't what I was told rejected it. I, I have two photos. So you can see on the left, I have a photo of the front. You can zoom in and actually pretty well to see condition of the card. Uh, and I have a photo of the back, including the cert number, the CGC cert number, which you can go on cgc.com or cgccards.com and look up this cert number and get really, really nice high res scans of the card against a black background that you can then use to you know, identify any issues with condition. Let's go down to description. So the description that I had that they seemed miffed by, you can only see part of it, sorry, but in the seller notes, I guess, under the title up front, I saw, I, I say, see photos for condition, CGC pristine 10, pop two, cert number in photos. So basically I say, check out the photos. You should be able to tell, you know, relatively what the condition should be, given that it's graded, given that you can zoom in pretty good. And then CGC Pristine 10 Pop 2 saying that it's a low pop at CGC 
and then cert number in the photos. So you can go ahead, grab the cert number from the photos and look on cgccards.com and take an even better look at those high res scans. Here is my description that I posted actually in the listing. CGC 10, Shaman EX, yada yada, Pokecune promo for sale, see photos for condition, CGC pristine 10 pop two, basically all of this stuff that I put in the seller notes, uh, cert number in photos, Thanks for looking and hopefully buying. This is pretty normal for all of my listings. That's basically all of my listings here for graded cards. It's essentially what I say in all of them. So apparently my description was not good enough and my there weren't enough photos. I was specifically told to add more photos against a white or black background to more easily see uh, damage on the card. And I was also told to add high uh to add zoomed in photos of each corner to once again show if there is any damage to the card and then i was told to better describe the card's condition in the description so this seems wild to me i can absolutely see this being necessary for raw cards absolutely see this being necessary for raw cards i do not understand why this would be necessary for a card that is graded because all of that has already been done by a professional. Everything that they've asked me to do has already been done by a professional, and I direct the buyer to all the resources they need to see that from the professional point of view. So I literally give them the cert number to look it up on CGC, and it's it's already graded a 10. So all of that's already been taken care of, but apparently you're supposed to give that description a lot better in the description section for some reason of the actual listing. Now let's take a look at the authenticity guarantee. Let's take a look at all the rules. So the authenticity guarantee is $350 or more are eligible for the service at this time for graded cards and then $250 or more for single ungraded cards. I don't think I've ever sold a card that's this expensive ungraded. I would always grade a card that's that expensive. Let's see, they partnered with CGC, CSG and PSA. Great, awesome. Um, verified returns. Once you sell an eligible card, it goes through authenticity facility. Uh, if you allow returns and a buyer wishes to return a card, it will be reinspected by the industry expert at a uh, facility before going back to you. So I, it kind of makes it sound like the authenticity company is on the hook for a return after they authenticate the card. So that makes me think that a refund might actually come from the authenticity guarantee whichever company is doing the guarantee, so whether it's CGC, CSG, or PSA, those refunds might actually come out of the pocket of those industry, you know, experts, those companies. Because once they authenticate the card, then honestly, it should come off of the buyer's plate completely. That doesn't make any sense to me why the buyer would have to re refund anything if it's, if it's been literally uh, confirmed, authentic, and everything's good from a reputable third-party company. That doesn't make any sense. So it makes me think that they're on the hook for returns. The lady that I spoke to on eBay did say basically that they have been getting higher than normal return rates on authenticity guarantee cards. And I think the people who are returning the cards are listing the reason being either an inaccurate description or not enough photos on the listing itself. Now, again, I could see this happening for raw cards. Like, because if you buy a near mint raw card on Troll and Toad, you might get a damaged card. Actually, there's like a 90% chance you're probably gonna get a damaged card. It's probably gonna have a crease. It's probably gonna have whitening all the way around. It's probably gonna have a ridiculous amount of hollow scratches. And you wouldn't expect that for near mint, right? So if I'm on eBay and I'm selling a $300 card and I make the photos look all good and it has a, you know, it has a dent, like a surface dent or it has a crease, a small crease or something that's hard to see in the photos and then it gets authenticated through PSA or CGC as a near mint raw card and then the person gets it and says, what the hell, this thing has a crease, I couldn't see that in the photos and then they say that the listing did not show it well enough, then I could see a lot of returns happening in that way. And then if that third party CGC, PSA, CSG company is responsible for the, the refund basically, because they've authenticated the card, I could see them getting hit pretty hard being a part of this program. Now, I don't know if that's true. That's the only way I could see them starting to turn away cards because they feel like the description is not good enough 
on, on their end. It does say the PSA authenticator will check the sealed plastic holder for signs of tampering before verifying that the holder and label are authentic to the grader. The label is also checked against the listing details. They do look at the listing details, but it looks like they're only supposed to compare what's on the label to what's in the details. So like matching up cert numbers, making sure that the you know title information is correct, making sure it's the correct grade, stuff like that, but not making sure that you're adding enough information, photos and description to, to make sure that a return doesn't happen. That seems way off base. That seems completely unnecessary. Unfortunately, the car did get sent back to me. I picked it up from my PO box and the buyer was an absolute giga chad. He's an absolute amazing dude. I reached out to him and was like, here's what's happening. The car was authenticated, but these idiots sent it back to me because of something, you know, some not good enough description or photos. And the dude was just like, once you get the card back, fix up the listing, I'll buy it again. No worries, bro. And I'm like, oh, what a beast, man. What an absolute beast. He came out of nowhere. What, it just, if it were me, I, I probably would have gotten frustrated and not have repurchased the card. But this dude was just like, dude, don't worry about it. I'll repurchase the card. It's all good. I did tell the lady too, and I hope that she relays this. But if that information is stuff that you need in your listing, you need a certain, you know, like a, like a minimum amount of photos. You need particularly, like particular photos. Like you need them against a black background. You need, you need them zoomed in on the corners. You need it, whatever. All of that information should be made public to people so that this shit doesn't happen, right? Because nothing that I did was wrong. It just apparently wasn't enough. So if there is minimum requirements for listings that are going through the authentication process, they need to make those known. They need to let people know that there are changes being made and that this is starting to happen because this was absolute nonsense. So Thank you guys for coming by. Uh, sorry, this video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but I just wanted you guys to know what was happening because it sucked. It's something that seems fairly new because I have sold things through the authentication process before that were just fine, that had the exact same listing details that got rejected here. So it must be something that's fairly new to what's happening currently with the, with the program. So just keep that in mind when you're listing your super expensive items, make sure you're adding a shit ton of photos, even if you have that cert number, and make sure that your description is really rock solid.